Okay. If you're traumatized, how can you be the observer? Okay, so someone knows that you're traumatized. Please, please hear this, all right? I want to be very clear. You realize that you are traumatized. That means already there's two. The trauma, which is moving in the mind, in the memory, and the intellect is, I can't, this is right, this is wrong. I'm not saying that that shouldn't be. But for this moment, you see that you're traumatized. There's probably a lot of emotions with the trauma. And of course, trauma is not positive by its use of the word. I'm assuming it's not a positive trauma. Remember, people win lotteries and they're traumatized. It's a positive trauma that has oftentimes some impact, like they'll have a heart attack or, or some such thing. And then I suppose people want to sue the lottery people or something. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, for right now, I'm assuming that the trauma is not positive, which will generate not positive emotions. It will generate negative emotions. And in this whirlpool of emotions and negative thoughts and being caught up in that whirlpool of negative thoughts and emotions and trauma, this would not be the moment to make a choice about being an observer. You know, you're going through something don't try to solve it in your head. Don't try to solve it by talk, 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 talk. First things first, you have to take care of yourself. What does that usually mean? And I don't mean to make it trite, but usually that means eating, sleeping properly, right? Because in trauma, our thoughts run more wild. Why do they run more wild? I understand this. One trauma will trigger what is in the back of the head. Unconscious related tabs on the computer will open. Hear me out. If I go to search on my computer, it anticipates based on my prior history and gives me many options, many options. So when we're in a trauma, naturally the mind is locking into so many other places, times, beliefs, experiences where we were traumatized or had a similar emotion, fear, anxiety, feeling alone, isolated, whatever it might be. Do you know that even movies create trauma in us? It's just not as intense. If you, if you watch a movie or whatever, TV show, whatever, you watch some drama, in which something happens, you know, a similar trauma where maybe someone feels lonely, isolated, there's some neglect, some abuse, verbal, mental, emotional, whatever might be. When we're watching it, we have forgotten that we are the observer. The mind, the observer has leaned into the mind and got into the, into the object that it's watching, the movie. It is absorbing it as a memory, as an impression, as if it's actually happening to you. If a doctor or a scientist were to observe, you would have the same physiological response as if you are under stress, just not as intense. Your cortisol levels would go up, maybe not as high as someone who's actually going through the event. Your heart would be beating faster, maybe not as fast as the other person. Your thoughts are streaming in the background. You're just not conscious. You have gotten lost into the movie. So even a movie has some impression that it has left behind. And then when we in real time, I say, quote, real time, right now in our life, when we go through something, all of it, like a floodgate opens and comes in front of us. Of course, in that moment, naturally, it's very difficult to be an observer, you know. But what we can do at that moment is honor ourselves, recognize that the mind and the body are out of control in this moment. I cannot observe it. I cannot be a witness to it. I have gotten lost into the trauma. And during the trauma, 
trying to move one way or the other, A or B or C for that matter, will not serve you or the bigger picture. I'm not saying avoid the decision. What I'm suggesting is for some amount of time, quiet the trauma by at least first gaining physical strength, make sure you're eating properly, make sure you're exercising properly, getting proper rest, and having your loved ones to support you around you. And support you doesn't mean go into continuously trying to figure out the trauma. Don't do that. Because that thickens the memory. I don't remember who, but someone said, you know, we go through something once and every time we talk about it, every time we try to bring it up into our attention to think about it, we go through it again and again and again. And that impression, that thinking pattern, if you will, thickens itself. It gets bigger and we store that in the back of our head again. So just quote, relax for right now, give it a week, 10 days, two weeks. I don't know what the trauma is, how big, small, what intensity it has for you. But dear, my first suggestion is soothe your spirit to quiet down. That's all. Then you will be, quote, the observer, meaning then you'll have a wider lens on everything. What do I do? And those who are your friends and family, what can they do? The best thing they can do is not keep bringing it up to talk about it, talk about it. If you need to be heard, yes, then you talk about it. But continuously, what it will do is bring up more and more emotion. And you know what? Our computer, our hard drive in our head holds far more than any big computer you can possibly imagine with the biggest of memory. And it's triggering too many things. So don't put yourself in the position of opening more and more and more files. Life is so big and so wide. One cause is many effects and one effect has many, many causes. You know, I, I don't want to get, get spiritual on a very pragmatic question, but at the same time, I want to put a wide lens on it. If you ask someone what created that, they'll say, oh, that happened because of um, Ali or because the traffic. And then what created the traffic? Oh, there was an accident. What created the accident? Oh, someone was drinking and driving. What made them drink? Oh, they had just lost their son or daughter. How did the son or daughter get lost? Oh, it's because the son or daughter had cancer. What, you see, each cause creates many causes and each effect has many, many effects. What does the observer do? The best we can, we try to look with the widest angle. I hope that answers the question. Um, you know, just, just respond.